up? What's up? Hey, today we are playing with the railway. Um, well... Uh, the track isn't that idyllic? No, it isn't. We are not playing with it either. Oh. We are taking inspiration from a YouTuber who accidentally managed to build a magnetic ramp. A magnetic ramp on which the magnet can move back and forth on its own. As you can see. And the railway? Uh, forget the railway. It just a means to an end. No electricity, no locomotive, just a wagon with a magnet on it. And what's so great about that? Uh, the great thing is that a magnet on a magnetic ramp only ever accelerates in one direction and then either gets stuck at the maximum point of the magnetic attraction or leaves the ramp in the case of magnetic repulsion. You can just put it back to the end of the ramp and it goes back. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah? Come on, tell me, what's the trick to this? Well, since the magnet moves in both directions, I have a theory of two ramps going in opposite directions. To do this, I'm going to take away all the magnets that have too little or no influence. The magnets are misleading anyway, because you can see the strengths of their fields. But if they all had the same magnetic field strengths, it would look like this. It looks like a single ramp now. Indeed. But if you look more closely, the sides are point symmetrical to each other and because the wagon at the end of the track is also turned around and additionally the magnet on the wagon is slightly shifted to the side, that could be the explanation. Ah, and the small and the large field is a magnetic attraction? Yes, but of course that's not as obvious than if you look at it using the gravity model. The model with the marble ball. Yes. I like that. What? Uh, oh good. Um, let me just explain it once again for the rest of the audience. Okay. If you look at a steel ball that goes into a magnetic field, you can easily see the similarity to a non-magnetic ball that rolls into a symmetrical deepening. Both balls behave identically in comparison to each other when the magnetic field or the shape of the indentation are identical in comparison to each other. Thus, one can imagine the following model. In the model, the magnetic attraction becomes a deepening with a ball in it, as the magnetic force. The ball that falls into the depression is therefore the effect. The depth of the deepening corresponds to the strength of the field. The forces are balanced if the deepening remains unchanged and the ball comes to a stencil there. A balance is created. This does not always have to be the maximum of the magnetic field. If a force is exerted transversely to the direction of action of the magnetic field, then the ball is pushed out of the deepening and up the slope. The force exerted to move identical, mutually repelling poles of magnets towards each other is symmetrical to the attraction as a hill. The ball on the top of the hill always tries to roll down the slope to the lowest repulsion. The poles try to avoid each other. This feeling is familiar to anyone who has ever tried to move two poles that repel each other together. After the magnets have moved out of the way, there is also a balance created. I use this model in all my videos in which I reveal why a perpetual motion motor cannot work. If we now apply the model to the bidirectional ramp, we have something like this. I see. 
turning the wagon around is actually moving the ball onto the B directional ramp next to it. Exactly. So the wagon is only going along one ramp at a time. Because the ramp on the other side has too little influence until the wagon is turned around. After the wagon has turned around, the second ramp has the greater influence. Nice. Oh man, well anyway. So, the way you see it now, the wagon would move. Just watch how this similarity is expressed, both with a model and later with a simple mirror inverted ramp. Nice. <laughs> shed some light on the magical world of perpetual motion magnet motors. If you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you dare. Thanks for watching. Have fun.